a little bit more confident. Mr. Speaker, I also rise as the Minister of Environment and Housing. As we are all aware, the Bahamas is vulnerable to climate change, and it's globally accepted as fact. Small island developing states, also known as SIDS, such as the Bahamas, are actually the least responsible for climate change, but yet stand to lose the most being the most vulnerable. And sadly enough, hurricanes such as Irma, one of the strongest storms ever recorded, in the history of recording storms in the Atlantic Ocean, may become more common as we move into a new era, a new era. Before the Bahamas came face to face, this monster hurricane Irma she wreaked havoc on our neighbors to the south including Antigua and Barbuda in fact Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown told the BBC that 95% of its buildings were destroyed and half of its population were rendered homeless by the passage of Irma so there you have just an indication of what how, how fortunate we were here in the Bahamas. And as she continued on her path of destruction, she impacted the islands of St. Martin, St. Barthelemy, also known as St. Bart's, Anguilla, St. Kitts and Nevis, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, Turks and Caicos, and entered Bahamian waters, causing historic mass evacuation. In fact, until we get the final reports from Lima, it is only then, until we get the final and complete assessments from Lima, it's only then that we will really get the full picture of the impact of Hurricane Irma to our infrastructure and to the lives of Bahamians. Mr. Speaker, I grew up in a clapboard house foot of temporal. And one thing I remember clearly about those days is we had a broom to sweep in the yard. And I know many of my colleagues in here remember that. And every Saturday, we had to sweep the yard. Every Saturday. And rake it. Today, we live in a Bahamas where we have become accustomed to garbage and waste. Whether derelict vehicles, Old appliances such as refrigerators, stoves, bulk waste, garbage is everywhere. This problem did not happen overnight, nor will the fix be overnight, Mr. Speaker. But this is a journey that we must all take together. The key objective of this national cleanup campaign is to not only make the environment look clean, but to make a difference so that our cleanup efforts are permanent and sustainable. Mr. Speaker, the only way we can accomplish this is by lovingly helping our people to change their attitudes towards the environment and usher in a new environmental culture and to understand that it is important to consistently keep the environment clean. Thus, broadly, we shall aim to, firstly, end decades of disregard for the natural and built environment. Instill in residents a desire to maintain their communities. Institute a no-tolerance standard to littering with stiff penalties. And continually make our Bahamas an attractive destination for our visitors, thereby improving the tourism product. But Mr. Speaker, this is a journey that we have to take together. And when we talk about improving the environment for our tourists, we have to remember that it is up to us, us, to value this country. We cannot expect somebody to come in this country and value it more than us. This is our job.